Hello, I'm Leroy Chow, a former NASA astronaut and the 311th person in space. I want to tell you a little bit about satellites. The Earth is a natural satellite of the Sun, and the Moon is a natural satellite of the Earth. In 1957, the USSR triggered a global space race by launching Sputnik. Sputnik was approximately the size of a basketball. Later that year, they launched a second satellite. It housed a dog named Laika. One year later, the United States jumped in with the launch of Explorer 1. The French achieved orbit in 1965. Japan and China followed suit in 1970. Today, there are 3,000 satellites owned by over 60 countries floating in Earth's orbit. One third of them are owned by the United States. There are four basic types of satellites. Earth observation satellites photograph the Earth and track clouds to bring us the weather forecast. The first observational type was a U.S. spy satellite. Today, the secretive National Reconnaissance Office operates an unknown number of spy satellites. Some are the size of buses and are masked in a concealing paint. Scientific satellites conduct experiments and explore the space beyond. The Hubble is an orbiting telescope that helps scientists to discover dark matter and calculate the age of the universe. Navigational satellites were first used to guide submarines around the ocean. Now the Global Positioning System uses satellites to transmit navigational information to cars and cell phones. Communication satellites are perhaps the most significant because they connect people to people. Let's travel back to 1960. This is the year when satellites lifted communication from the Earth and for the first time, a voice in New Jersey could be clearly heard on the phone in California. Just five years later, commercial communication satellites blanketed one-third of the globe. In 1965, Time magazine made some predictions about satellites' future impact. These included fax machines, computer communication systems, live TV, and international phone calls. Since then, we've also seen satellites create better climate models and even discover lost biblical cities through advanced imaging. Currently, the Pentagon is looking into massive sun-gathering satellites, floating power plants in space in essence, that could beam gigawatts of solar energy back to the ground. This could provide round-the-clock, clean, renewable energy. In 1998, the International Space Station went into orbit. Scientists from many different countries are now doing research in physics, astronomy, meteorology, and biology. Zero-gravity medical research is being conducted, which could eventually lead to human space colonization and a future that goes well beyond the geographic constraints of the Earth.